Welcome to Dodger Fan Weekly, Week 10. I'm Adele. And I'm Annadelle. And, and we love the Dodgers. We missed a week. We're glad to be back. We did miss a week. Some really cool things happened, though. You know, there was interleague play, which that is going to last forever. But did Darn you it. notice that on all the Crosstown rivalries, they played two in one stadium and two in the other? You know, they did do the interleague play. But right. since the Mattingly um, shakeup, right, they've been playing more gritty. Yeah. And so that's good all around. Right. They have been leaving less men on base. Yes, in fact. The LOB numbers are the, going down. Yes. We're six and a half games out of first place, even though we're in the cellar. Other teams are, let me see, 18 and a half back, uh, 12 and a half back, 16 and a half back. Yeah. I don't think we have that much ground to cover. Let's say this is the strike zone. This is what's happening with the Dodgers. Mm -hmm. When a pitcher makes a mistake, the Dodgers need to capitalize on it. Right. Okay. This is the whole strike zone right here. Can you see? Strike zone. <laughs> and K if zone. a pitcher K zone. <laughs> if a pitcher tosses one right here, the Dodgers are fouling them off. Right. They're not taking advantage They're, of the mistake. Right. So a mistake that a pitcher makes is when he's throwing a ball perfectly to be hit out of the park by one of our hitters and they're getting under it and fouling it off. And then, you know, the, you have someone like Ethier who gets really frustrated when it's right. somewhere around here or here and he blah, blah, blahs. But he's, <laughs> I guess he'll get better at not blah, blah, blahing. Well, um, anyway, you know. so a good at bat is if you take advantage of the mistake. Capitalize on the pitchers making mistakes. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's part of a good at bat. Yes. Okay, it's time for Dodger trivia, and okay. this time we're going to concentrate on numbers, but the numbers we're going to concentrate on are retired player numbers. Oh, oh my god! For those of you that don't know, they retire numbers of players, so no one will ever wear those numbers again, all right? So, oh, that's right. That's Not cool. everyone knows that. All right, ready? I guess so. All right, let's Yay. start. I'm scared. Number one, Pee Wee Reese. That's right, Pee Wee Reese, shortstop in Brooklyn. Number two. Tommy Lasorda. Yes, Tommy Lasorda. <laughs> of course. Number four. <sighs> Duke Snyder. That's right. Yay, Duke Snyder. Number 20. Don Sutton. That's right. Number 24. Oh, Walter Alston. That's right. Number 32. Sandy Koufax. Yeah. Okay, number 39. Roy Campanella? That's right. Oh, God. Roy Campanella. Good, good. And, hey, I'm pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Number 42? Well, Jackie Robinson. That's right, Jackie Robinson. And I do want to say one thing. Number 39, number 42, both have had movies made about them. Yes, they have. Not just Jackie Robinson, even though deservedly so, mm -hmm. obviously. But Roy Campanella wrote a book called It's Good to Be Alive. It was published in 1959. They made it into a TV movie. Oh, in 1974, Michael Landon directed it, and Paul Winfield played Campanella. Oh, so that's see. pretty neat, huh? Okay. All right. Anymore? Number 53. Don Drysdale. That's right. One more. Number 19. 19. I don't remember ever seeing a 19. Well, oddly enough, he's called... The most forgotten Dodger, Jim Gilliam, number 19. Well, I forgot him. Do you know, he played for the Dodgers for 14 seasons. Oh. And he was known as one of the most unselfish, generous players ever. He hit behind Maury Wills, and he would... Oh. Maury was a base steal stealer, and mm -hmm. so if Maury was on base, he would sacrifice himself hitting the ball in a direction that would enable Maury to score. I oh. mean, and then he was with the Dodgers for 28 years total because he got in the organization and coached. And so Jim Gilliam, number 19, his number is retired. And it should be. And I will never forget him now. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right, it's time to talk about next week. Oh, good. Great. We're this, at home. We're at home. Yay. We get to come home, play lots of games. We get to start with um, rivals, San Diego Padres. Wow. They're three games and they're right in front of us, only by a game. 
Right. Right? right. So we play them first for three games. Mm -hmm. Then coming to town are the hot Atlanta Braves. Oh, four games. Four game That's series. That's right. That's a lot Dodger of baseball Stadium. with Atlanta. Mm -hmm. We gotta beat them. They're in first place in their division. Mm -hmm. They are. And, uh, you know, I like our chances. We're playing scrappy now. We are gritty. <laughs> We're gritty. It's time for Who's Hot and Who's Hottie. I'll tell you who my hot is. Okay. Juan Uribe. He is hot. He had three doubles one of these nights last week. It was crazy. He's having fun playing, and guess what? Juan Uribe is my hot as well. Oh, cool. He stole the base. For heaven's <laughs> sake. Amazing. <laughs> and that swing. Precious. precious. I precious. love it. <laughs> it's precious. Worth the price of admission. It is. <laughs> now, who's the hottie? Hottie. I'll go first on hottie. Okay. My hottie is Steve Lyons, oh, Dodger cool. announcer. Good. Don't you think? He is a hottie. Come on, folks. Steve Even Lyons. after all these years. Yeah. I like him. <laughs> well, I'll tell you who my hottie is. My hottie is actually not mine. A fan wrote in oh. because she wanted to vote for a hottie. She has chosen Skip Schumacher. <laughs> he was a hottie for me once, too. That's right. Wow. He is a hottie. <laughs> French fries aren't necessarily baseball fair, but French fries are baseball fair when you put them in a batting helmet. French fries in a batting helmet. Can't get any better than that. Oh. Ah! I did it! <laughs>